Well, at DMT, one of the things that has caused me to think that it must that it might have a role in the chemistry of dreaming is that one of the frustrating things about it is you have this experience without doubt the most bizarre, appalling, peculiar experience you could possibly have. That's at minute two. At minute five, you're raving about it. At minute seven, you can't remember it. And so it's literally like gold running through your fingers. You say, you know, this is the most amazing thing. This is the most amazing thing. This is, what am I talking about? Uh, and you know how you can have a very engaging, complex dream and the alarm goes off and by the time your feet hit the floor, you're grasping for it. And it's just, it's literally melting before your eyes. That's a very DMT-like presentation. The way a dream melts away is the way a DMT trip melts away at the same speed. Well, uh, over time and using tricks, you can drag a certain amount of data out of it. Um, and what I'll do is uh, I'll describe a DMT trip. And it's, uh, it's a composite of maybe 40 of these trips. And uh, then you can see what you make of it. So this is, uh, I'll just describe it, I'll be the the graduate student, you be the guy with the clipboard, you're saying to me, so what happened? Okay, here's what happened. You, I took one take. Uh, most people can get off in about three to four hits. Now there's a trick to it. Hash smokers are greatly favored in this endeavor because you really need leather lungs for this. Uh, the great problem is that people will cough or not be able to hold it in. You take two hits in a situation where your clothes have been loosened and you can just flock backward uh, when you need to. You take two hits. Now many people miss the point because after two hits you feel completely peculiar. You feel as though your body is undergoing some strange kind of anesthesia. All the air has been pumped out of the room. This is the visual acuity thing I talked about last night. The colors jump up. The edges sharpen. It's, uh, and at that point, people say, whoa, wow, it's really coming on strong. And then what you have to do is you have to take one more enormous hit. And this separates the intrepid from the casual, believe me. Because most people, and, and the facilitator doesn't want to lean on the person. You say, you know, damn it, take the third hit. And say, no, I feel completely weird. I know you feel weird, but take the third hit. Well, if you can coax somebody into that, then what happens is you close your eyes and you see the ordinary warm brown back, you know, closed eyelid scenario. And then these colors begin racing together and it forms this mandalic, floral, slowly rotating thing, which I call the chrysanthemum. This is a, a place in the trip that you want to see as you go by it. The chrysanthemum forms and you watch it for like 15 seconds. If it doesn't give way, then you didn't do enough. You have to do more. One more hit usually will do it. Well then, what happens is it like physically propels you through this chrysanthemum-like thing. And you there's a sound like a, a saran wrap bread wrapper being crumpled up and thrown away, you know, that crackle. A friend of mine says, this is your radio intellect key leaving through the anterior fontanelle at the top of your head. I don't know what it is, uh, but it's, it's something is being... Yeah, right, that's what it is. Uh, and then there's this very, uh, very defined sense of bursting through something, a membrane. And on the other side, 
and this is now, remember, my experience. On the other side, as you break through, there's a cheer. There's a, 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 a whole bunch of entities waiting on the other side. And they, you know that Pink Floyd song, the gnomes have learned a new way to say hooray. Well, it's that place, it's those gnomes. And you burst into this space and, um, and they're saying, how wonderful that you're here. You come so rarely. We're so delighted to see you. And the, one of the things about the MT that's really puzzling is, in a sense, it doesn't affect your mind. For instance, if you take ketamine, the first thing you notice, the very first thing you notice before the trip hits is you notice that you no longer are anxious about having taken ketamine. You just sort of anxiety leaves you. That means it's affecting your mind. It's doing something to the judgmental machinery. DMT doesn't lay a hand on the judgmental machinery. You, you break through into that space exactly who you were before breaking through. And the usual reaction of most people is something like, You know, you think, God, heartbeat, normal, pulse, normal, everything's normal, yeah, everything's normal, oh God, because these things are there, and they're hammering at you, and they come forward, they're like jeweled, self-dribbling basketballs. And there are, there are many of them, and they come pounding toward you, and they will stop in front of you and vibrate, but then they do a very disconcerting thing, which is they jump into your body. They jump into your body, and then they jump back out again. And the whole thing is going on in this very high-speed mode where you're being presented with thousands of details per second and you can't get a hold on, you say, you know, my God, what's happening? And these things are saying, don't abandon yourself to amazement, which is exactly what you want to do. You just want to go nuts with how crazy this is. They say, don't do that. Don't do that. Pay attention. Pay attention to what we're doing. Well, what are they doing? Well, what they're doing is they're making objects with their voices. They're singing structures into existence. These things are, and what they will do is they'll come toward you, and then, and you have to understand, they don't have arms, so we're kind of downloading this into a lower dimension to even describe it. But what they do is they offer things to you. Say, look at this. Look at this, and as your attention goes toward these objects, you realize that what you're being shown is impossible. It's impossible. It's not simply intricate, beautiful, and hard to manufacture. It's impossible to make these things. The nearest analogy would be to the Fabergé egg or something like that. But these things are like the toys that are scattered around the nursery inside a UFO or something. Celestial toys. And they are the toys themselves appear to be somehow alive. The toys themselves can uh, sing other objects into existence. So what's happening is there's just this proliferation of elf gifts. And the elf gifts are moving around, singing, and the whole thing is directed towards, the, they're saying, do what we are doing. And they're very insistent. They say, do it, do it, do it. And you feel like a bubble. For, and now this is subjective. I mean, only a, you know 5% report this, but it happens to me. You feel like some kind of bubble inside your body that's beginning to move up toward your mouth. And when it comes out, it isn't sound, it's vision. You begin, to, you, you discover that you can pump stuff out of your mouth by singing. And they're urging you to do this. They say, that's it, that's it, keep doing it. 
And the whole thing is like, you know, we're now at minute 4.5 with this stuff. And uh, you speak in a kind of glossolalia. There's a spontaneous outpouring of syntax unaccompanied by what is normally called meaning. It's sort of, uh, you know, he ding wa wa sap di di mu de ti ti ting get wa ha si ti pi pi nem wa ha ve de dum bo ha ga ye te. And this is accompanied by a, a modality, something seen. And they're saying, yes, do it, do it, do it. And then after a minute or so of this, the whole thing begins to collapse in on itself. And they literally begin to physically move away from you. And usually their final shot is they actually wave goodbye and they say, deja vu.